Okay, so we're now recording. Welcome to the first of a fall 2021 um, webinar series on uh, MAC, Minerva's Academic Curriculum. So um, I am Sam Harlow, my pronouns are she, hers, and I'm the online learning librarian, and I'm helping facilitate these webinars on behalf of many people across campus. Uh, that's the great thing about MAC, it involves it involves us all. So um, welcome. So these are going to be around 40 minutes and we're going to have panels of various stakeholders, administrators, teachers across UNCG talking about our um, new general education curriculum, um, again known as Minerva's Academic Curriculum, MAC. So I'm going to start to say MAC from now on. Um, so um, the way this is going to run is that um, I'm asking everyone to stay muted um, as we're recording and then um, our panelists are going to talk for around 20 minutes. So if you have any questions throughout, you can put them in chat. If it's very relevant to what's being said right then, I will like stop the flow and throw it out there. If not, we're gonna hold the questions until the end. Um, and then we'll um, do a 20 minute session for Q and A's um, about your questions about Mac. Uh, this is being recorded. You will be sent a link to the recording through email and they will also live on um, this webpage, which I'm about to drop in the chat. Um, here. And this is um, also where you can sign up for others coming in the series. You have to go early. Um, we will send you an assessment as with the recording to let us know how we did, if you have any suggestions. But note there's um, tons of other series coming up um, in this, uh, this series, Fall 2021 series. So welcome. So um, I see making... I think all the panelists are co-hosts now. And are there any questions or concerns as we're getting started? And if you're just coming in, we are asking for people to mute themselves for the first 20 minutes, except for the panelists who will be talking. Um, and you can unmute at the end. Um, you can keep your cameras on, but note that this is being recorded and we will put it on YouTube. So if you keep your camera on, um, you will be in the recording um, just to give you a heads up, which is uh, fine if you're fine with it. So any questions before uh, I hand it over to Francis who's gonna moderate this great panel? Okay, Francis, it's all, all right. right you now. All right, well, Sam, thank you so, so much for a wonderful introduction. And also uh, this webinar series is Sam's brainchild. So thank you for the idea. Uh, this Mac Mondays uh, webinar series will hopefully be something that uh, lives long and prospers. And this is our first semester uh, underway with this, and this is our very first session. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I checked this morning and we have about nearly 50 folks who have signed up. So there's definitely interest, there's momentum, and we really look forward to, to receiving your feedback and your questions today. because. This particular 40 minute session is devoted to the Mac launch. So as Sam was saying, Minerva's academic curriculum is starting. It is officially launched this semester and it is now UNCG's official foundational learning program. It is replacing gen ed curriculum or GEC. So there's a lot of exciting news to share on this. And of course, a lot of uh, a lot of places where we can have a conversation together to make sure we're all on the same page. So my name is Francis Bottenberg, and I'm actually a lecturer in the philosophy department. And for this semester, I'm also the undergraduate studies faculty fellow. And that means that I'm in part uh, involved in implementation by co-chairing the MAC implementation committee. I'm going to drop a few little tidbits into the chat. Uh, I may do this at the end of our conversation as well, but want to get it on everyone's radar that we have a Mac, um, a Mac website that's up that's linked here in the chat. There's also a Q&A Google form. So if your question doesn't get answered today, please feel free to use that form. We also have an in-person event, uh, a launch event this Wednesday, which I hope some of you will also come attend. We're going to be spreading out in the nursing instructional building. It's going to be a wonderful event. So we'll, we'll mention that again at the end of this session. But since we have limited time uh, in this lunchtime webinar, let's jump right in to conversation today, which is focused, as I said, on the MAX launch. So we're here with some wonderful panelists. These are all, as far as I know, fans of MAC uh, and people who are certainly deeply involved in its implementation. So let's start with you know, a brief round of introductions. 
Uh, then I'll pose two warm up questions, as it were, to the panelists and then uh, open things up for a Q&A. So panelists, you know, if you could maybe tell us all about your role on campus and then specifically your role within the MAC implementation project, that would be wonderful. I suggest we go in alphabetical order by first name. So that means, Amy, you get to go first. <laughs> I saw that coming like a mile away. I just want to just be clear about that. Um, so hi, I am Amy harris -Hauk. Um, I am the department head for research, outreach, and instruction in the university libraries. Um, I also co-chaired with Jody, who's coming up soon, um, the general education revision task force part two, aka GERT two or whatever you want to call it, um, which is the uh, the group that ultimately came up with the program that is now known as MAC. Um, I also am currently the chair of the General Education Council. So, wow, it's a lot. There you go. Thanks, Amy. All right, Andrew. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, give you a big smile so you have both MAC and cheese. Yes, I just came up with that. And I regret it instantly, regret it instantly. Uh, so I'm Andrew Hamilton, I'm Associate Vice Provost for Student Success and Dean of Undergraduate Studies. I co-chair the MAC Implementation Committee. And um, mostly I uh, fret over whether or not we are going to be able to offer as good a program as our committees imagined when they built it. So I'm feeling like I'm, you know, are the implementation was bumpy a little bit partly because of covid but i like just let me tell you i'm excited about this curriculum and i know you know this year we're we're going to we're going to is, is our launch year but i think really by next year we'll be in a situation where we're we're able to draw students to the institution on the strength of our general education program and that makes me very happy gives them flexibility they don't currently have gives them you know a way to resonate with courses and instructors they don't currently have so um thanks to all of you for your interest and we're looking for good things Thanks, Andrew. Dana? Hi, everybody. I'm Dana Saunders. I'm the director of the Students First Office um, in the Division of Student Success here at UNCG. Um, my role, uh, I'm a member of the MAC Implementation Committee and am primarily representing advising related um, interests as far as we transition from GEC to MAC. I was part of the General Education Revision task force, I think both one and two, um, and serve as an ex officio member of the General Education Council, which Amy mentioned that she chairs. So good to be with you this afternoon. Thank you. Speaking of Jody, Jody. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jody Pettizzoni, and I am an associate vice provost here, but most relevantly, I have worked with the General Education Council pretty much from the day I arrived on campus in 2011. And with Amy Harris Hoke, I was lucky enough to chair the committee that was able to pass this general education program, which I think is going to be a phenomenal opportunity for our students to um, integrate some foundational learning that they'll then take into their majors and enhance there. And I'm excited about it. Thanks everyone for joining us. Oh, and I'll also mention I'm an FYE 101 instructor. Thank you. And last but not least, Laura. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Laura Pipe, and I direct the Teaching Innovations Office over in the University Teaching and Learning Commons. Um, so I am on the MAC Implementation Committee, and really my area is focusing on course development and course design um, and helping faculty and instructors get ready for the actual um, development and delivery of their courses within the MAC program. Thank you so much. So you see we have a broad array of experts represented on the panel today. So I'll echo what Sam has posted in the chat. Now's the time, uh, folks, when please, we would love to have you post your questions, comments. You know, if you're familiar with Reddit, think of this as an AMA, ask me anything. You have uh, incredible talent and expertise here to help you uh, get into the Mac uh, and understand it and, and pose your questions. So as you're thinking up your questions and posting them to the chat, I would love for the panel 
to respond to two uh, warm up questions, as it were. And panelists, I'm going to give you the liberty to either answer one or both of these questions. And I'll say that Jody and Andrew, you sort of already jumped the gun here on me because the first question is, what do you love about this new gen ed uh, foundational learning program? Uh, so any of the panelists may speak to this. And the second question is, what do you see as an important goal for this first year of max rollout? And we don't have to go in alphabetical order on this one. So whoever wants to start things off, let's take a few questions. Andrew. I'll tell you what I love about it. I think, um, I think students don't know what general education is and they mostly think that they're here for a very specific education. So uh, what I like about the Mac is that competencies make sense to folks and that we can package it easily in ways that will resonate with students so that they feel a connection to the course rather than that they're just working through a checklist. I just wanna echo that and also echo what Jody said. Um, I, I really like and appreciate that um, the MAC is, is knowledge and skills that we want students to have not only at this foundational level, but also as they apply to their majors um, and as the former co-chair of the, the task force, I am also proud of how much input we got. We got input from, from everyone, you know, obviously faculty and students, but also community members and everybody that we could possibly talk to on campus. Um, so I, I think that what we ended up with is a program that a lot of folks are excited about. And um, that feels like a a great accomplishment to me. Yeah, so I'll jump in and mention um, just in terms of functionality, having 11 competencies, each of which is either three or four credits that add up very easily to 33 to 34 credits. It's a very simple, um, straightforward representation of all of the foundational learning that we really want students to have. And students only have to take one in each of the competencies. Um, so for them, functionally, it's a very clear pathway forward. And of course, each of these competencies identify particular areas of learning that we know are so important for students, even if this is the only class that they take in a particular area like health and wellness, um, it will still be important for them moving forward. We'll know we'll, we will have delivered that foundational learning. But one thing that I'm looking forward to in the future in, in phase two, three, four, or 87, whatever it may be, is that this presentation of a program offers the opportunity to engage competency-based learning and that is competency-based also assessment of learning that students might have brought to the university so it's it's a great way for them to see progress toward their degree without without having to duplicate some learning that they might have had at another institution or that they might have had in prior learning um, at other places, whether it be in a job or in service that they may have done. So that's a really neat opportunity for us moving forward. It, it, it will happen at a much more mature point in the program, but it is something exciting to look forward to. And I'd echo um, some of really where Jody's looking at because from a teaching and learning perspective, the beauty of this program is it starts to really shift our teaching culture on campus to some of the best practices in teaching and learning, right? It's a, it's a focus on formative assessments and how do we help students begin to apply knowledge in context for where they want to go and who they want to be, but also how do we allow students to continuously provide us feedback. So we're adjusting the course as we go to make sure that we're meeting the competency, not some arbitrary idea of what needs to be covered. Um, and so it really is starting that process of shifting our teaching culture to what we know are best practices you know, and learning and the assessment pieces that go with it that Jody it, said that um, are the most exciting parts, I think of where we can be going in the next few years. Great, thank you. Yeah, Dana. I'll maybe just add, um, building a little bit off of some things that some of the other panelists have already mentioned, but I really appreciate how the new uh, MAC really forefronts some 
topic skills that are really relevant to our students, not just in the future as they're preparing for their career paths, but also as you know, 21st century learners, as um, engaged members of the community. And there may be things that existed in our general education previously, but maybe are forefronted in kind of a different way. Specifically, I'm thinking about diversity and equity, that specific competency or our foundations competency, which is really focused on supporting students in transitioning to college and building their information literacy skills. I think those are things that are already important to our undergraduates as they're beginning their collegiate career and really forefront as um, competencies that we've not necessarily demonstrated in the same kind of way with MAC compared to our old program. Brilliant, thank you so much. I think, I think all of the panelists have had a chance to respond to that initial round of questions. And we do have one question posted in the chat. So Sam, do you want to um, do you want to share that with us? And we can we can start the Q and A portion. So uh, please continue posting your questions to the chat. Also, if you prefer, just uh, use the raise hand symbol um, or raise your hand, and we will look out for you. Okay. So the first question is from Christina. Hi, I am a biology advisor and faculty member. When students add a minor or concentration, are they automatically moved to the 21, 22, 2020, 22 catalog? If so, can we advisors move them back? And for how long will we be able to submit this catalog change? That seems like uh, an advising forward question. So let's see what Dana has to say. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. So as we as the MAC implementation committee was anticipating sort of just the transitional challenges that come from uh, transitioning from GEC to MAC, uh, we knew that our current catalog policy could present potential hurdles for our continuing students since moving from moving catalogs would now put students in a position where they would move from GEC to MAC which may have some unforeseen challenges for students who've been pursuing one program and into another. To quickly answer your question, Christina, students who are um, continuing at UNCG, if they are in a situation where they need to make a change to their program, so to their program, to their major, adding a minor, they are, they, there's currently a moratorium essentially or an addendum in our current uh, course catalog policy that allows our current students to choose. They can choose between remaining on their existing catalog, so before that they added that minor or made a change to their major or program, or they can choose to move forward to the 21-22 catalog and by shifting forward obviously move to the MAC program. For most of our continuing students, it will be in their best interest likely to remain on their existing catalog versus move forward, but they can certainly move forward with advisor guidance from that. The addendum to the catalog policy is only in place currently for this academic year, um, but the, the implementation committee plans to revisit this in the spring to sort of see where we are based on the trends and issues that we're seeing as part of MAC implementation so far. But for currently, as the policy is, exists, continuing students have a choice and they can stay on their existing catalog when they make that program change or they can move forward to the 21-22 catalog. Okay, great. We do have okay. another question from Joel. What do we have in place to ensure that students and faculty fully understand MAC and how it benefits them? If I'm a rising sophomore, for example, how am I getting educated on max impact and key differences? So I think part of that question, I, I, I believe Dana has addressed. I, I just want to add that I posted into the chat a link to the MAC advising page. So all of the great information Dana just provided you, you can access through that page as well. So I, I think, you know, for rising sophomores, uh, this this is one of those things that they don't care about until they do. So because because they're on a they're on a, 
uh, they're in a catalog and in a program. So this, I think, goes back to Christina's question a little bit. So a student, when they make a change, will have the opportunity. That's a what if opportunity. And we hope that they're talking to others about, you know, uh, if, if this is a student who has either transferred in or from high school or dual credit programs or whatever, or has done significant general education work in their first year, it might be the case that they're better served staying on the existing catalog. And again, I would I would recommend strongly to any student who asks that they check it out. Um, we have online resources for them uh, for this, but I think they probably should talk to somebody uh, because that particular set of questions and answers is uh, complicated. It has a lot of moving parts, and and I think it's not s simply a matter of comparing comparing hours to hours because. There might be things that they're able to do in Mac that they can't do in the current gen ed and the other way around. So, um, you know, phasing out a, a curriculum and phasing in a new one is not, is not simple. And so, Joe, I think probably that's what motivated your question. Um, we did a, a fair bit of uh, talking to students about what was coming in the year before the pandemic but current rising sophomores would have benefited from exactly none of that because we weren't doing it during that you know during that part of the rollout and during the pandemic so um team it might be worth talking about uh some kind of virtual or actual road show for existing students or just some um expanded online resources for students who have to face the question i mean I, you know this is the kind of thing where talking to all students about it probably doesn't make sense because they most of them don't need it but but the few when they need it really need it does anyone have any questions where they would like to unmute and say anything um or put it in the chat as people might be thinking of it i have a question that i will pose into the group in that how are we planning on assessing how the um, implementation um, will be uh, done in fall 2021. Hey Sam, but before we do that, could we could we explore Joel's question just a little bit more? So, yeah. you know, I basically said talk to your advisor. Um, but Dana Scott really has developed a really good advising page with help from Francis and others. Dana, do you want to talk about, you know, do you, do you want to talk us through kind of what's there for those who are trying to advise students on how to advise themselves? through the online resources? Sure, so Francis shared the direct link to the um, MAC advising website specifically uh, when I was answering the question earlier. That is definitely a work in progress as we are continuing to develop resources um, and support students and advisors in understanding and sort of anticipating um, the outcomes of their choices. The main things that are there right now is uh, are the policies that were passed by the General Education Council and, uh, that we call our sort of get to MAC transition policies. So there are a variety of policies in place essentially to um, hold students harmless is sort of the phrase that I always talk about, hold students harmless when and if they're in a situation where they are moving from GEC to MAC because there are certain situations where they have a choice there are certain situations where they must move to a new catalog and so therefore must move um, to the MAC program. And so we've got information there on, on those policies, um, which I can talk more about if we need to. Um, the other things that are on that um, website, which directly relates to Christina's question earlier, there's a UNCG advisor guide to university catalog changes. So if you're working with a student, who's thinking about moving to a catalog as a result of a program change or must move to a catalog, to a new catalog as a result of their program change, it, can, it will walk advisors through sort of, um, again, the different outcomes of that. Um, and then the other thing that is currently on the MAC advising website are the general education petitions and the processes that are associated with those petitions that are available to students or for advisors to submit on students' behalf. Um, regardless of which program that they are on, regardless of if they're following the GEC curriculum or the MAC curriculum, but if there are situations where a student would like to request um, 
credit, general education credit for transfer courses that they're bringing in. That's a process that we have in play. There's also a, um, petitions for students who are requesting a substitution due to some kind of extenuating circumstance. And then a new process this year called um, the MAC Administrative Review, uh, which is, is sort of part of this transition from GEC to MAC as we're anticipating students um, maybe need a little sort of closer scrutiny of their records as they're moving from the GEC program to the MAC program. So that's the information I think that's there right now. I don't think I've missed anything. Um, the other thing that I'll mention as far as advisors goes, um, advising resources goes, is that we will be launching in a few weeks the 21-22 academic year schedule of Advisors Academy and our Coffee and Conversation series. And so definitely Mac has been part of that series last year, will continue to be part of that series this year, along with our Mac Mondays um, features for advising as well. So just know that those, uh, those resources are continuing to develop and will continue to be available as advising questions arise. So let's turn to Sam's question regarding um, the assessment question, mm -hmm. Jody. Sure. Um, I, if I remember right, Sam's question was just about the process for evaluating the program. And we're going to have multiple layers in place to do this because we know we've got to look at it short term, we've got to look at it long term, we've got to look at it at the competency level, and we've also got to look at it at the program level. Um, we're going to start this year, uh, both in fall and in spring, conducting assessment processes of student learning, which is really the, the essence of this program, right? We want to make sure that these students are learning the competencies that we've identified for them. We have 11 competencies and it would be a logistical nightmare to assess them all in a single semester. So what we're going to do is evaluate all 11 competencies over the first two years that the program is in place and then start a regular assessment cycle after that. So this fall, we've already notified faculty who are teaching FYE 101, um, uh, first year experience foundations courses, um, all foundations courses, all um, health and wellness courses and all data analysis courses. And those competencies were chosen because they're brand new to UNC Greensboro's general education portfolio. We've had global and we've had diversity and equity at UNCG, but these are three competencies that are really new. So we decided that we'd want to start off by getting a gauge of where the student learning resides in relation to the student learning outcomes that have been identified. So that will happen this fall. Um, in the spring, we've got another set. I know we've got written and oral communications that are on the list. And then um, fall and spring of 22 and tw uh, 2023, we'll be doing, we'll be completing the 11 competencies. At the same time, we know the perceptions of learning also matter. So we'll be conducting surveys of both faculty and students to see how they perceive, perceive learning happening in their courses and in the program overall. So we can expect to do a faculty survey um, this fall and at the end of the spring probably as well. At the end of the spring, we'll do a survey of our students to get a perception of the overall program and their, their courses specifically. We then have particular um, matri matri metrics that we want to track for the course of the program. Um, it's things like how the MAC is, imp is impacting retention and graduation rates. And of course, we won't be able to track graduation for four years, but it's worth looking at retention now. We're also very interested to see the number of students who are able to complete their MAC program within the first 45 credits, because all of these courses were identified as foundational. And we know that the students need them early in their career likely the first 45 credits is the place to get those. So we wanna get a gauge of what percentage of students are actually getting the program within um, that time frame, And then there will be other met metrics that we want, that we identify along the way that we want to collect as well. So this will be an assessment process that will be um, at different levels and over multiple years. And we'll be looking for input from everybody. Um, so that you know the student learning 
outcome assessment process that we have at the university involves both the instructors of record and then a set of other faculty who did not teach those courses to review the learning to get a second set of eyes on um, the evaluation of student learning. And we use all of that data to evaluate both our program and of course to contribute to our accreditation processes. If I haven't answered any questions um, that, that are important to this, please let me know. Thank you, Jody. Does anyone else on the panel want to speak to this question? Okay, you did a thorough job, <laughs> Jody. Thank you. So we have we have about nine minutes left. So of course, this is the time for your truly hardball questions. Get them out. Um, and again, if you want to ask it yourself, please just unmute yourself and, and go ahead. I can ask another one, but I really wanted to give people a chance to uh, ask their questions. So I'm still pausing a little bit, but um, as a librarian who liaisons to kinesiology, community and therapeutic recreation and public health education, um, who I've been working a lot with the health and wellness competency, but I know this also comes up in foundations, but questions about scaffolding um, information literacy within the MAC courses, because that's a part of the competencies. Um, I mean, Amy, I know, worked on these competencies and was a big part of them, not to put her on the spot, but um, like examples of that or um, how it came to be, um, how you could work with your librarian on that. Um, and again, if there's other questions, I am still monitoring the chat. I can talk about this. Thanks, Sam. What a great question. Um, so to give you a short historical introduction to the, the presence of information literacy in the MAC program, um, in the previous general education program, um, we had what we called learning goals and LG1 involved all sorts of different kind of skills and knowledge quantitative reasoning was in there information literacy was in there um, but those the the things contained in lg1 did not actually map to specific markers I, every time i say the word marker i say to myself it's the last time you're going to say marker amy um, so so it was something that was you to be important to the institution, but it wasn't actually reflected in, in the program itself. Um, so when we were, you know, coming up with the, the structure of the MAC program, um, information literacy was something that came up, not just from the library people, but from folks all around that we want students to be able to, um, to evaluate information and um, to choose, you know, good information to figure out what it means to choose information that's appropriate. Um, and then, of course, you know, use it correctly and cite it and be an ethical, you know, user and producer of information. Um, so it, as Sam said, exists in two places in the foundations competency and also the health and wellness competency. And also, as Sam said, there are librarians that work with um, each department on campus. If you don't know who your librarian is, I suggest you find out. Um, and those folks are the ones who can help you not just with teaching of research skills, but also designing assignments and um, things like that. And since there was a real question, I'm going to, sorry, Sam, that was a real question. I didn't mean to say that it wasn't. Um, <laughs> I'll buy her a coffee later, I promise. Um, I will stop there, but okay. talk about Amy's my boss. Coffee. I'll just be and sure we'll, to. <laughs> I probably buy her coffee, I promise, tomorrow, yeah. Sam. Um, okay, so Christina asked that transfer students when arriving at UNCG due to the new MAC only have to take two semesters of foreign languages instead of the usual four semesters for the other students, which I believe is very important. Is this just part of the transition or this will be the norm for transfer students? I can take this one. Does that sound good? All right. Um, good question, Christina. So the foreign language requirement is actually not 
specifically a component of Mac. It was actually not specifically a component of Keck as well, but it is part of the College of Arts and Sciences um, requirements for all programs or majors that are majoring in the College of Arts and Sciences. So previously this was known as LEC or CAR, depending on uh, which catalog and what students you're working with. Under, they also have undergone a revision of LEC and CAR. Um, and so now their new program is called Communicating Ideas in Context. And is specifically intended to layer um, on top of, for lack of a better phrasing, the competencies that are part of MAC um, based on the liberal arts um, focus, obviously, that's within the College of Arts and Sciences. So students who are on, who are majoring in the College of Arts and Sciences, who are um, on the 21-22 catalog are responsible for MAC plus KIC communicating ideas in context. And so that is what is driving the foreign language requirement. And so I would definitely, I, do, I know less about that. I'm learning along with all of the other advisors on campus as well, but those are good questions um, to direct to the College of Arts and Sciences Advising Center, since those are specific to the college. So another, just quickly on this, if I may, the some language courses are counting for some MAC competencies, but they don't replace the language requirement in the, in the college. So my, I think all students who graduate with degrees conferred by the College of Arts and Sciences require 12 hours of language, and not GEC nor MAC has anything to do with that. Okay, thank you for that question, Christina. Any final question as we're approaching the, the end time for today's session? Hey, I'd like to hear how it's going. So some of you are in, in classrooms for the first time with new courses or newly cro crosswalk courses. Um, it's early, but what are you feeling? I'll start calling on people. Can you all hear me? <laughs> hey, Emily. Yeah, welcome. Okay. All right. I was given, trying to give plenty of time for someone else to jump in, but I'll just share real quick. Um, FYE 101 is the program that I oversee that several folks on this call either partner with us or teach um, as part of the foundation's competency. And we're really um, proud and happy to be part of the program this year. Um, I don't know if it's specifically related to Mac or just general the student experience right now, but students are extremely engaged. I think one thing that is, um, I think there's a lot to do with the pandemic and the students' experiences over the course of a year and a half and what that now means for them to be here at UNCG in person. Um, but I also think a lot of it, we've been working really strongly uh, or really hard to create strong ties to academic partners and cohorting the students and having that instant connection and bond and community just sets them up to have commonalities and common intellectual experiences with their peers. And then to be able to facilitate the curriculum um, and to meet the competencies just kind of gives it, I don't want to say a foundation for a foundations course, but it does give a strong solid base for us to then build on and scaffold their experiences. So I'll just speak from FOE 101 perspective, happy to share more or less, um, but just overall, we're seeing high levels of engagement this year, um, which is a little different than previous years. Again, I think there's lots of layers and reasons behind that, but I think the academic partnerships and ties and the connections in the cohorts have really been helpful. That's so, so wonderful to hear, Emily. And, you know, there was an earlier point made about student communication with students, and I think you know, one of the great things that we can start doing is building, as it were, student ambassadors. So folks who understand who are who are in Mac and who are having good experiences, it's fully our intention to to get some of those students involved in furthering that message. Uh, and of course, some outreach to student government and student groups will be part of that as well. So hopefully we can, you know, Emily, capitalize on the sort of energy that students are bringing uh, and reporting in relationship to foundations specifically, but also their other MAC courses. That for me would be a really important uh, year one of the rollout goal is to is to really increase student awareness of MAC and uh, and sort of the benefits of being involved in this program. 
So it's now 1240. <laughs> uh, so everyone is off the hook uh, for now. Thank you so much to our panelists and to Sam for setting this up. Thank you all for being here. We have posted lots of stuff into the chat. So go ahead right now and save the chat so that you have it. There's lots of good websites for you, web pages to access. I will do one final plug for the in-person Mac launch event this Wednesday. It is a drop-in event. So that means you can show up anytime from 12 to three. It is happening on the fifth floor of the new nursing building, rooms 510, 511. But frankly, we're occupying that whole space. So we also have the lounge. We also have the really nice outdoor patio area. So we will be able to socially distance. One of the reasons you all might want to attend is that there will be faculty present who actually help develop the new Mac competencies, SLOs, and, and rubrics. And so if you're teaching in Mac, as Andrew was saying, if you're teaching in Mac, show up to this event, you will be able to sit down with faculty who really helped create uh, the new aims of this program and the new learning objectives, and you can talk to them about your course. So please do consider attending and we look forward to seeing you in future webinars uh, and in person. Hi everyone, I'm gonna end it. Thank you.